We've covered the start in miles 1 through 8 in part 1. We survived Hurricane Point, crossed the Bixby Bridge, and made it to Garapod on mile 18. Now, we're about to start climbing again. Now, even here at mile 18 and a half, you look at this little grade that we're going up. This is a pretty substantial little climb. It's maybe an 80-foot climb. And if we have a wind, we're going directly into the teeth of the wind. That's the direction. When we have the winds, they come down from the north. We're going to pick things up here for the next two miles over gently rolling hills. This is exactly mile 20. We're at mile 20 marker. This is the wall at Big Sur. And uh, by this point in time, I hope you're not feeling like this, hitting the wall. And you'll need to push through the wall because you've got a lot of elevation change ahead. So now we're coming into the highlands. And this actually right here is one of the first hills uh, as we enter uh, the highlands area. Most people that have run the course several times will tell you that this is the toughest part of the course. It is continual climbing and descending the whole way through here. As we get further here, one thing you'll really notice is, is the cant in the road because the cars are coming through here and with some fairly steep turns and so they've got a real bank. One of the other things that's uh, very nice about this part of the course is that there are side roads here where there are actual people. So we get spectators out on the course. We just passed mile 22 and in a little bit here we're going to come along the, uh, the Highlands Inn. When, when I come across an intersection like this that we've just come through here, being a local, what I always yell out to the people is, thank you for letting us use your highway. Because if they didn't, this marathon would be out of business. This area right here is uh, where we have probably the biggest spectator group on the whole course. There are probably a couple hundred people along here. And one of the very famous elements on this course here is the strawberry lady. There's a woman out here that passes out strawberries. The marathon course comes out of the highlands, comes along Point Lobos, and then drops down here into Monastery Beach. So from here we could get our last glimpses of the ocean before we finish uh, the marathon. And right here, along Monastery Beach, is the Surfrider Foundation. They're out here with dancers. They have a lot of drums and musical instruments, and so there's a lot of excitement. We're also now ready to climb what you'll see beyond me there is the mile 25 hill. So we're cresting this last hill on the marathon and traditionally there's a bagpipe up here. In fact, I'm not so sure I enjoy bagpipe music because I always associate it with a very painful hill. We come down the hill and we're heading now down to the finish line. At this point, there are actually a fair number of spectators lining both sides of the road and uh, we're going to make a turn here and uh, cross the uh, Carmel River. We just passed mile 26 coming right across the bridge here. There's mile 26 and now we make this turn and we see the stoplights and the banners, the finishing banner for the Big Sur Marathon. Now remember, as you cross the finish line, don't stress about your time. You're not going to run the Big Sur Marathon to break a personal record. You've seen the hills. Remember that in a south to north course, odds are Mother Nature won't be on your side. It's a race where you get a chance to experience one of the most beautiful roads in America without a car in sight. Also keep in mind that at Big Sur, you're not going to feed off the energy of a screaming crowd. While we don't have New York's three million spectators, You'll love our three million spectacular views of the Big Sur coastline.